C9 takeover. Hey, Let's just go. Let's just go. I remember the first time I was standing there on the set. They had to do my makeup, and I was like, oh, is that what movie stars do? Okay, I'm going to sit in the seat and get my makeup done. I'm damn handsome. And Doug took me over to a storefront. Set. Set. Action. We were shooting this film in November in New York City outside at night. So you have the obvious challenges that you might assume of it being quite cold a bunch of the days. I had to follow what Doug was telling me to do, and it was cold. And I had to focus on keeping my eyes focused and not act as if I was looking. And it was tough with the weather. You don't need to scan so much, but really, yeah. So just like, I'm, well, I'm scanning because I don't know where he is. Yeah, sure. So that's, that's, that was the scan, just, you know. Right, sure, of course. I think it helped to just provide Robert with a lot of the touch techniques. So giving him signals to indicate keep going or to indicate like the scene is gonna be cut or to stop, I think really helped out in the situation. He was sticking it out. I, I thought Robert was about to like tap out, but he was like, nah, he said, no, I got this. Like, I just needed a quick breathing. He just got right back up and was like, yeah, we, we're gonna finish this. We're gonna do this. And when he did that, that just tidied me up. And I was like, yo, I, I, I could get through this too. Oh, sorry. It doesn't matter if I'm deaf and legally blind. I still felt like I could do it. We were shooting the almost the whole film outside at night. And in, in, in those settings, Robert really has little to no vision. So something that we needed to figure out ahead of time, how do we break off and create little settings where the interpreter is well lit enough so that him and Robert can communicate. So whoever was not actually interpreting at the moment would hold the light over Robert's shoulder so that the light wouldn't distract him. So it was coming from behind Robert so he wouldn't get any ambient glare and he could actually see the interpreter. What is that? Um, it's called a silent call pager. It's a very simple system. It's just one way. It either chimes or it vibrates. So when they're striking the lights, yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 this is your part. So I'm just helping you find it, but it's your role to have. Take more ownership over it. Okay. It was a scene when I, when I had to like, when he touches me and I kind of like shift, I kind of flitch through my reflexes. And he was saying that, you know, in real life, like it's, uh, it's a sad thought that people in this world are afraid of like, you know, human connection. The point is just communicating. It doesn't matter how you communicate, whether it's through sign language or with pen and paper. There was a kinship that was building between us. And I believe that it showed on camera. It was something just magical just happening around everyone on set. Cut. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I had to let that out, sorry. <laughs>